All right, folks, so we're gonna look at synthetic division. And first things first, I'm gonna say this many times throughout the video, is make sure you use this only when you're dividing by a linear factor, all right? You cannot divide this any other time. And again, I'm gonna show you plenty of examples so these steps are gonna make sense once we dive in here. So number one, we're gonna place the coefficients in descending order, very important. Right? It's like my mom always used to say. Mama says that alligators are ornery because they got all them teeth but no toothbrush. All right. Step two, place the number in the denominator with a opposite side on the outside. What? All right. Again, we'll show you what this means. So right now these steps, they not, might be 100% clear. Once we dive in, you're like, oh, okay, I got it. And then what I want you to do is you're going to translate this into your own words so it makes sense to you, not Jose over there. All right, and then we're going to divide. So let's check this out. All right, so here's what it looks like. Let's pretend we have this polynomial here and we're going to divide it by x minus k, which is a linear factor. I'm gonna say this over and over again. This has to be a linear factor. And check this out. My coefficient here, my leading coefficient is a one. We'll talk more about that, all right? Call me. All right, so when I say the opposite side, notice we said have x minus k. So we take the opposite of negative k, which is positive k. And that's what goes on the outside. That's what we're talking about when we say the opposite side, all right? All we're gonna do is make sure this is in descending order, right? And then we grab the coefficients. So we grab these coefficients and these are the numbers, right, that are going inside of our division here, all right? So this is what the process looks like. You take that leading coefficient, boom, you drop it like it's hot. Whatever you get here, right? You're going to multiply k times this value. So k times a is ka and you put that value right here. So notice whatever values are here, you're multiplying by this uh, k that's on the outside and then whatever that result is, that's what's moving up. So here this is kind of like a little flow chart to kind of help you visualize what's happening. But again, once I do this right now uh, in put in action, you're gonna see. But this is kinda, everyone thinks different, right? Some people like a little mapping of what's about to take place, all right? So again, if this doesn't make 100% clear uh, sense right now, don't worry, I got you. So these are rec uh, gonna represent the coefficients of the quotient, right, right here, and this is gonna represent the remainder. So let's just take a look, all right? Let's start off with, with an example. All right, so here from uh, www.onlinemathlearning, they give us a picture here, but I'm gonna do my own in, my, in a few seconds here. So here, the example they give us is 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 29, and we're gonna divide that by x plus four. So number one, make sure it's in descending order. So it's in descending order, but notice, you see how we're missing the x term here? So whenever you're missing a term, make sure you put a zero placeholder. Write that down, this is money. All right, write that down. And notice we're dividing by x plus four. So what we just said is this four, we're gonna make it negative four when we bring it out. And again, this little notation that you're seeing in this textbook, I'm gonna show you an alternative way of writing this, but it all means the same thing, it's just notation depending which textbook you're using your, or your instructor, what he or she is familiar with, right? This notation might look a little different, but it has the same idea. All right, so here's our coefficients. And so we do is that two, we have it here. The six, we have it here. Notice there is no X value. So whenever there's something missing, we put a zero placeholder and that 29 is right here. All right, so here's what happened. The two, we dropped it like it's hot. So there it goes. What do we do with the two? We multiply it by this negative four. So you multiply these two and you get negative four times two, which is negative eight. And that's what goes right here. Well, what do I do with these two? We add them, right? So these are always added. Write that down. 
And so six plus negative eight is negative two. Well, what do we do with these numbers down here? We just said we multiply them times negative four. Negative four times negative two, bam, that gives us eight. So that's what goes right here. What do we do with these two? We just said we add them. So we add zero plus eight, we get eight. We, what do we do with that eight? We multiply it times that negative four. So negative four times eight gives us the negative 32. And then what do we do with these two? We add them and this is our remainder. And these right here, these are our coefficients of the quotient of our answer here. So notice we started off with x cubed. So our answer is gonna start with x squared, right? So it's gonna be two x squared minus two x plus eight. And that's what we have here. And because you're dividing by a linear factor, what happens to your degree is your degree always drops down by one, all right? So this degree, whenever you're using this synthetic division, your answer is, your degree here is always gonna drop by, drop by one, all right? Even on Sunday, all right? So that's what we have here. So let's do one um, where I go step by step, all right? So hopefully this is making a little bit more sense. All right, here we go. So most of you are gonna see it like this. So I'm gonna rewrite this and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in descending order and if I need placeholders, I'm gonna put placeholders. So I'm gonna put one X cubed. Notice I'm missing the X squared term. So I'm gonna put plus zero X squared. I'm missing the X term. So I'm gonna put plus zero X and I have my constant, which is eight. And I'm gonna divide this by X minus two. All right, so what I said is I'm gonna grab that negative two and I'm gonna change it to positive two. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at this right here. Since it was negative two, you're taking the opposite sign. So it's positive two, all right? So we're gonna put that right there. And then we grab all the coefficients. Here are my coefficients. The numbers in front of the variables. So we're left with one, zero, zero, negative eight. All right, so notice my notation is a little different than what you just saw, but it means exactly the same thing. All right, so what does the process look like? Well, we said this guy, we always drop it down, so we get one. What do we do with that one? Well, these numbers, we multiply by this two, whatever's on the outside. So two times one, that gives us two, and we bring that right there, all right? We just said these numbers always get added, right? So if you need to write that in your notes, then that's what you write down in your notes, all right? You get two. We multiply this two by this two. So we multiply these two and we get four, all right? So that four goes right there. Once again, we add these two, all right? So we add those two and you get four. And then we're gonna go ahead and see if we get a remainder here. So let me use a different color. Whatever's on this side of the line is gonna be a remainder. So we're gonna get uh, four times two, which is positive eight. So that eight's gonna go right there. And we're gonna add these two and we get a remainder. Well, in this case, we have no remainder. So our answer is clean. So when we divide these two, right, our answer, notice this was X cubed. So our answer is gonna end up being one X squared plus two X plus Four. So this is our final answer here. When it's all said and done, that's how you do it. All right, folks. So something very important that I missed is don't forget to subscribe, like, share this video with a friend or 10,000, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.